Hello there. Hello again and welcome back to my channel. Now I've just spent about half an hour recording the video and of course the video stopped recording halfway through so here I am again. Let's hope it's better luck this time. So welcome back to my channel. I've talked uh, quite a bit about the services that Pharmacy provides on this channel and I do recommend that you have a look through those playlists because it will go into detail about what Community Pharmacy does and what it's all about. So please do feel free to click on that playlist, the Pharmacy Services playlist, to get a better idea. But now to introduce what it is that makes Community Pharmacy click, and that is the Community Pharmacy team, the members of the team that are involved. And so for this video, I'm going to go through 10 different roles in Community Pharmacy. And the way we're going to set this up is I'm going to start with five roles that are involved without uh, requiring the M Farm degree and then the next five roles so part two of the video if you like is going to look at the 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 roles that do require the M Farm degree so let's get straight into it uh, the first uh, role that I'm going to discuss here because there are quite a few is generally speaking probably the first person you see when you get into the pharmacy the one that goes hi how can I? The medicines counter system. So this member of the team is trained generally in providing health, the lifestyle advice. They link in with quite a lot of the services on that playlist that I've mentioned earlier. So things like uh, support for self-care, particularly where they're giving advice, where they're providing information relating to the medicines. Uh, where needed, they are signposting or directing you to the correct place for care. Uh, and if they are unable to help, then they will uh, know when to refer to another member of the team. Uh, so the medicines counter assistant, they're usually the ones that deal with your initial requests. And they might be the ones that also accept your prescription and pass it on to relevant members of the dispensary team. Uh, which we'll go into now to be a medicines counter assistant there's usually a course this might be internal training done uh, within the pharmacy you're working in and some external training providers as well uh, affiliated with the pharmacy uh, that you uh, train alongside working in the pharmacy so that's number one number two is a dispensing assistant and there's a minimum level of qualification required here and that is the MVQ uh, level two dispensing equivalent. So in this uh, particular uh, role, uh, they are involved in the dispensing process. They might help with labeling medicines. They might help with dispensing of medicines. They might help with the stock. They can help in various ways, uh, depending on what their assigned role is. And that requires, again, a course alongside work, um, which generally they say takes a few months to a year to complete. Uh, so that's the dispensing assistant. So that is role number two in community pharmacy. Role number three is the slightly more uh, advanced version of this, which is a pharmacy technician. And a pharmacy technician, that's usually around two to three years. Again, it is a course that is taken alongside working in a pharmacy that provides a bit more in-depth training, a better understanding of the medicines and conditions. So they emerge from it as uh, uh, qualified technicians. And these technicians are in fact, uh, pharmacy technicians are on the pharmacy register, the same regulator, the General Pharmaceutical Council, the same regulator that regulates pharmacists also regulates pharmacy technicians. So there's that increased responsibility uh, and they might be involved in numerous services that the pharmacy provides. So that is role number three. Role number four is the accuracy checking technician. And this is usually a course that's done after the pharmacy technician uh, course. Uh, for individuals that want to specialize in accuracy checking and uh, if you recall from a previous video again I'll try and link them uh, I don't remember which shoulder it will be there anyway uh, they are involved in the accuracy checking of medicines against a prescription and uh, when you if you recall what it was a pharmacist usually or within a pharmacy there are around four checks that i've mentioned that occur uh, against prescriptions there's financial checks 
uh, just to make sure that the pharmacy is paid correctly. There are accuracy checks to make sure uh, that uh, the, the, the basically that the medicines match what's on the prescription. There's clinical checks and there's legal checks. So there's a, a range of checks that the pharmacist does. Now an accuracy checking technician can do the accuracy check and this is one that does take a lot of time for the pharmacist. And so by, by having that allocated to an accuracy checking technician, that can considerably save the pharmacist time and free up their time to do other services and other things within the pharmacy. So that was number four. Uh, then we have, uh, and, and this is kind of the, the highest role as it were via the general courses, um, but then you can go on to other routes such as the managerial route, which brings us on to number five, which is managers. Now managers can be via the uh, pharmacy route or the non-pharmacy route, it depends on the employer. Some employers uh, take on managers and those managers don't necessarily have to have pharmacy experience, they don't necessarily have to be pharmacists, that really depends. Sometimes you can have an accuracy checking technician or pharmacy technician uh, becoming a manager themselves. So it's not um, limited in that sense it, as in any business it really depends on what the employer is after there but uh, you can have managers and obviously the bigger the business is the more managers you might have so uh, a small independent might have one or not you know only one manager and uh, a larger uh, chain or multiple might have a, a regional manager they might have area managers they might have team leaders they might have a range of managers there so that is role number five that is available within the pharmacy uh, you know via the conventional route and not a pharmacy degree so that's part one we've looked at uh, the five roles there that are uh, re do not require the pharmacy degree uh, and this is common roles in community pharmacy now we'll go on to part two uh, and part two involves uh, the pharmacy degree itself and how that progresses so uh, number six on the list so the first one in this part two is pharmacy students now pharmacy students uh, they uh, will often try and apply for work experience and uh, many of them will have jobs alongside uh, their pharmacy degree and pharmacy is a great job to have alongside your degree because you're applying what you're learning through the course uh, and the pharmacy students uh, don't have to have this same dispensing level uh, equivalent that I mentioned in part one in order to work in the dispensary and the reason for that is so long as they are uh, pharmacy students enrolled on the course and working towards an MPharm degree they don't have to uh, do uh, anything like that. So if you just bear with me so that I make sure this doesn't turn off recording again. Sorry about that I get quite self-conscious now that it's going to just suddenly stop recording and just waste uh, all the time I spent so here we go again so we've just mentioned pharmacy students uh, so if we go on now uh, to the the next step up so after the student has completed their degree and again as I mentioned for a pharmacy student working alongside it's a fantastic opportunity uh, to hone their skills and depending on which year they're in uh, might depend on what responsibilities they're given alongside the degree but they don't have to do this dispensing assistant course so number seven is uh, the trainee pharmacist and the training pharmacist was previously known as a pre-registration trainee uh, but this changed and so they're now known as trainee pharmacists and the training pharmacist what they do they have an exam to sit at the end of it okay so they're qualified uh, they've they've got a degree in pharmacy but they can't practice as a pharmacist yet and they have to do this training year uh, the formerly known as the pre-registration year and it's now known as the trainee or your foundation year I think uh, and they will need to pass an exam at the end of the year as well as um, to do a uh, a range of competencies that they have to reach so they will have a designated supervisor a, a a tutor if it were uh, who is a pharmacist who is going to be leading them through this year to make sure they achieve their competencies and then hopefully they get signed off to be ready uh, to be a pharmacist then they just have to pass their assessment uh, to 
be able to practice as a pharmacist and go onto the pharmacy register. So what role would they have? Well, the pharmacy uh, trainee will basically throughout the year, they might start with uh, similar roles to a dispensing assistant, uh, depending on their previous experience, and they work up uh, throughout the year uh, building their competencies and they effectively shadow the pharmacist so that towards the end of the year, they are acting like they are the future pharmacists, so they are taking on uh, roles similar to what a pharmacist would take on, except at that stage, they're still under the pharmacist's supervision. So that's the trainee pharmacist. Now, role number eight, I think that's right. Uh, role number eight is a, a temporary role that was introduced in the coronavirus situation with the pandemic. Uh, and that was for provisionally registered pharmacists. Now, whether this is something that ever features in the future, time will tell. Uh, it wasn't a role that was ever existed before, but the mix of having a, a shortage of pharmacists at the start, as well as so much uncertainty for the trainee pharmacists who've just undergone their uh, you know, training and, and didn't have an exam at the end of it, and they they were kind of in limbo there was this position there and they to be honest they were acting pretty much like pharmacists they were carrying out the pharmacist roles they were carrying out services they were able to carry the clinical check of prescriptions the legal check of prescriptions they were acting as interim pharmacists uh, there were some conditions so for example uh, to be a provisionally registered pharmacist uh, they had to it was done firstly the tutor had to be able to sign them off there were certain conditions that would uh, you know, only some, uh, you know, there were certain conditions that had to be met for them to be able to be on the provisional register. But they had to sit the exam at the first sitting as soon as uh, the situation allowed for them to sit the exam. And uh, they weren't allowed to locum, which means work in multiple pharmacies, uh, you know, almost like you're self employed. Uh, but uh, the provisional uh, pharmacist was effectively a pharmacist that was under supervision acting as a pharmacist. That is, the role they did, they, many uh, that did that role really showed their value as future pharmacists and um, that whether that continues in the future or not probably depends on whether life brings any situations like the, the one that we saw. But that one I've mentioned as a role here, whether it's something that is uh, still available in future, only time will tell. Then we go on to number nine, which is pharmacists. And pharmacists, are the after you've finished your, um, your undergraduate training and then you've finished your trainee year, you can become a qualified pharmacist. And a pharmacist in the community, well, their roles are many. Uh, and I may be doing separate videos on each of in these individual uh, roles if anyone does uh, want me to or benefits from that but the pharmacist can be involved they are uh, involved in the day-to-day -day responsibility and running of the pharmacy they will ensure that the the prescriptions are checked they will ensure they will carry out services they will supervise the other staff they will basically do many of the things that the healthcare needs require them to do they will do the services that are mentioned on the pharmacy services playlist they will be going through and ensuring the overall safe and effective day-to-day -day running of the pharmacy. And within that, there is uh, there might be some stores where there's numerous pharmacists, and one of them is the responsible pharmacist. And that doesn't mean that the other pharmacists are in any way irresponsible, I should certainly hope not, but it does mean that there's particular requirements that come with having a responsible pharmacist. And again, hopefully, uh, time will tell, but hopefully that will be covered in a future video as well. So the pharmacist is role number nine in a community pharmacy. And then we go on to role number 10, which is the superintendent pharmacist. And the superintendent pharmacist has a great sounding name, um, but the superintendent pharmacist's roles is usually to ensure the operational framework behind what is going on in that pharmacy. The superintendent pharmacist uh, may be responsible for 10 pharmacies or 15 pharmacies and the idea here is the the procedures are in place and again hopefully there'll be a future video on standard uh, operating procedures and what they are and why they're important in pharmacy but the idea is that the legal requirements the uh, all the different types of requirements that need uh, to be met in running a pharmacy business, the superintendent pharmacist needs to make sure that those procedures are in place. 
uh, and that uh, you know that the the pharmacy team have that in place uh, for them. So those are very briefly the ten roles that are in pharmacy. There are other roles that I haven't discussed. There's the delivery drivers that might be involved in the pharmacy process, uh, an integral part of the team as well. And again, uh, there's no pharmacy degree needed there. Uh, and then there might be other roles such as to do with accounts or to do with administration. Uh, and this all depends on how the pharmacy is set up. And while I've mentioned these roles, not all of these roles are in every pharmacy either. Uh, so you might find a pharmacy where uh, the, uh, for example, you've got the pharmacist is the manager, so the pharmacy manager, you might have the, the superintendent in a smaller pharmacy, uh, does the superintendent's role as well as the pharmacist's role uh, and the manager's role. It, it really depends on the setup, but each one does have distinct responsibilities on what they uh, are doing. There's also, uh, for example, the owner of the pharmacy has certain responsibilities and if the owner is not the superintendent, so the owner might be someone who owns the pharmacy but has uh, got someone else running it as a superintendent, so there's responsibilities there. But anyway, I hope you've uh, enjoyed or gained something from this short video. It is a short video overall given how big a topic it is, but it shows you that the community pharmacy workforce, there's many roles in it. Uh, there's, uh, and this is dynamic, it's changing all the time. So I hope you have benefited from it. And as always, please like, share, subscribe and comment. And hopefully I will see you sometime soon. And hopefully it hasn't stopped recording uh, midway through. I really do hope so.